welcome to the conclusion of MSI 2018. Every day of this tournament has delivered with surprise performances, picks, and plays, all leading up to today's final here in the Zenith Arena. Fans were roaring for our challengers today as RNG entered, ready to reclaim the MSI Championship trophy for the LPL as they look to take down Korea's King Zone, Dragon X. Of course, the fans have packed the arena. Romain was out on stage getting them fired up just moments ago, 30 minutes ahead of the opening ceremony. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson, joined by Joshua Jat Leesman, Chris Papa Smithy Smith, and Indiana Pulse Fire Riven Black. How are you guys feeling? Are you ready for our final day of play here at MSI? Absolutely, man. We've seen such a competitive group stage and such a unique tournament, but at the end of the day, it is China versus Korea in the final once again. And it's been building, it's been building. It's not just the crowds, it's the gameplay as well. It's how close this tournament is. It's just so hyped to find out who will be the victim. Coming into this tournament, we talked about, you know, this new chapter of League of Legends, the fact that the old guard, the SKT, isn't here. Edward Gaming not representing, so it's time to cement a new legacy or possibly start a new dynasty for both these regions. Right, and while we're maybe missing some pieces of history in the teams that are attending, the regions themselves have plenty of history when it comes to their play at international tournaments, and in particular, MSI itself. And so we're going to be very excited to see how everything plays out today, along with the English language broadcast, though. 15 other broadcasts teams are bringing the finals action to fans all across the world. Among them are the French broadcast team, and we wanted to check in with our generous hosts, Laure, Noir, and Chips. Hello, hello, you beautiful people. How are you doing today? Amazing, how are you guys? Uh, we're doing quite well. The arena is loud as ever. I, I'm amazed that you guys still have voices at this point after casting this incredible tournament with so many ups and downs. How, how are they holding up? You got, you got enough in there for five games? Yeah, <laughs> it's, the, it's the last day, so I think we can hold on, but it's we, hard. We got our magic tricks. Ah, oh, that's good to hear. You have plenty of tea and honey and whatnot. What's it been like to be hosting this incredible event here in your home country and in Paris? Well, I think it's... Um, oh, sorry, it's... Uh, it's hard sometimes to take uh, to speak English in front of all the trolls in the audience, but we are really proud. We are really proud of seeing this event, and uh, I hope the international audience and the streams uh, will like uh, the atmosphere. Well, I appreciate you speaking English because if I tried to speak French, it would be so so much worse. You can say bonjour. Oh, bonjour. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. I have been so enamored by this crowd here in the arena today. Do you think they'd give me an AU? Yeah, for sure they will give you an AU. All right, let's give it a shot, ladies and gentlemen. AU! I love it! There it is. We're just ready for our game soon enough. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope the three of you have a fabulous cast. Thank you so much for playing host to us so far on this trip. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right, awesome. see you Thank you soon. All right, today's victor will make their mark in MSI history by joining the likes of the champions before them, dating back to EDG's historic win in 2015. Yeah, and we said it yesterday, but now it's 1,106 days since the EDG team from the LPL upset at SKT in that epic five-game MSI final. Since this happened, there have been two MSI victories for the LCK, three world championships for the LCK, and their dominance was retaken. But for this moment, you felt like the LPL may be able to overtake them, and that feeling could happen again today. It was just such a memorable final. That was the one where the LeBlanc win rate finally took a hit for Faker. That was the one that sticks in the memory. Surreal to think over a thousand days ago. It was also the legacy Evelyn pick. I know we all talk yeah. about the Morgana into the counter LeBlanc, the trap that Coach Aaron of EDG had sprung for Faker, but clear love to lay down the gauntlet to say, this one is on me. I'm taking my signature champion as well. I hope we see the same from Uzi today. Five games there, hoping for five today. At the start of this tournament, we were guaranteed to have a new MSI champion crown, but only two teams waded through a storm of challengers to get to this point. First, there's the LPL's RNG, where Uzi hopes to break his international curse. Back domestically, we do have a nickname for Uzi. He was called the Crownless King. So many second place finishes, but never able to finally lift the trophy. He is now king of the LPL, king of the ADCs, and riding that momentum into an international stage. And I feel like he got his ep appetite wet, and now he recognizes how many trophies he wants to put in the case. Yeah, and you look at the way they've been playing around him as well. It's more confidence than ever. I think in a lot of past tournaments, he has fallen back to some of the more supportive picks, saying, yeah, I can really be the team player, but 
RNG and Uzi seem to have fully embraced the full 80 carry. And then, of course, there's King Zone, who didn't exhibit the same dominance that many expected from them at the start of the tournament. And with King Zone, it's opening the legacy of the G, the Rocks, Tigers, and the Long Path, the Prey and Gorilla in particular have followed. They've really struggled to fill the mantle of the Seoul Korean representative. They still don't have that international title. Prey, 610 competitive games before we start today. 540 for Gorilla. They need this title. And I think for King Zone, it's to entrench themselves as this number one representative of Korea. I think they're very comfortable coming to Worlds being one of three, mm -hmm. but being the one of Korea, that's a mantle that really only SKT has wielded since the Korean dominance started in 2013. Yeah, and it adds even more pressure, especially when they struggle and falter a little bit during the group stage. Six and four, they're not only competing against the other teams in this tournament, it feels like, they're competing against the ghosts of SKT, and it's hard to keep up with that pace car. Oh, very much so. Now for Uzi, everything's led up to this, and a victory here would mean more than words can express. Express。当时拿到第一个IL票冠军，当时真的心里想着，哦，我可能已经等我很久了，就当时拿到以后就感觉哇，这个好像很简单，但是也就很久很久都没有拿到过嘛。当时真的非常开心，然后世界赛的
kind of where the house of cards starts. And in a lot of ways, if BDD doesn't have any pressure in mid lane, we've seen it when he's had bad games, you Sit never get Khan well. going, and then Khan could be their win condition. So Uzi takes less to get going than BDD kind of being the starter. But when I say Uzi is the best player in the world, I have to answer that Uzi is more important to his team. Right, if if I have to take any player, I take Uzi. Right, if then. Yes. It's an if then statement for you. All right, next up, RNG is China's best hope for a world champion. What do you think, Frost? <laughs> oh, I see the deflation. Oh, but, no. But you have to understand, the, those who didn't watch domestically, RNG weren't even supposed to be here. Everyone was saying, this is Invictus Gaming, this is Rogue Warriors. But then the fate, the legacy, the miracle that had to align for an Edward Gaming versus RNG final, the fact that RNG had to run the gauntlet through Team WE, Snake Esports, Invictus Gaming, and then also Edward Gaming, the own demons themselves. So on that momentum, yeah, but it's just <laughs> RNG, they've never they've never been the top team. Again, you keep yeah. seeing them internationally, and so people might grab, they're the best Chinese team ever. But the thing is, is domestically, they have never been the best LPL team. And I think you've been very outspoken about IG, and I completely understand where you're coming from. They did look dominant. We all watched their yep. games. But the big thing is that IG had so much power on the solo lanes, that kind of decided everything. I kept waiting to see answers to lingering questions about how do you play from behind? Where are your other win conditions if the lanes don't go well? And I don't feel like they were challenged, whereas RNG, I really do think when it comes to world success, they've shown so much tape, and I believe in them more. I will say this, I don't think that RNG is the best team to lift a championship for the LPL, okay. but I do believe that Uzi is the best player to do it. And, and I think, international strength can be very different than domestic strength. If SKT would have made it to MSI, even the current format. Really, SKT, are we sure about this? There's yet? a chance <laughs> they may have had a slightly better group stage. And I think the same can be true between RNG and IG. IG has been great domestically before. This was definitely their best split, but we haven't seen Rookie at Worlds in so long. We've never seen the shy Invictus Gaming star top laner who was injured in the playoffs at the international stage. But what we've seen out of RNG makes me think they have a chance. So the fact that I've seen them and the fact that Uzi's been in the finals twice, they have the experience and I think they have China's best chance for an international title. But going through other Chinese teams to get to those finals, That's they're gonna make problem. it. All righty, well moving away from the teams themselves and towards the, towards the champions rather, as was shown in the last two semifinals, I'm gonna make a big statement here. Aurelia is overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> Out of two picks and only some bans in the semifinals, you guys just, I'm gonna say yes. I actually think no. I'm yeah. gonna say no, because the thing we we see uh, what at Worlds it was the misfortune, but the mm -hmm. thing was is while she was dominating, I know that there were some counters that were being scrimmed with the luck support being one of them, and we just unfortunately never got to see it enter the world stage. And I have to assume that since both these teams have shown the Aurelia, that they obviously must have some sort of pocket pick, or at least I would hope that they yeah. have a pick to deal with it. It's about champion pool for me because the the matchups in mid lane. Remember, we're talking about Aurelia mid. Aurelia was, of course, thought of to be a top laner even after the rework. I think top lane, she's very susceptible. In the short lane and mid, she's getting matchups like Talia and Karma that she does match up to very very well. But she can fall behind. She does need early items. I feel like there's definitely things about her that are very strong in the current meta. But just saying overall that she's an overpowered pick, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, and I'm still not sure how it's going to pan out. But when I see pro players getting solo kills and leaving the fight with 70% health, they know something about that champion that their opponent doesn't. The last time I can remember that happening was actually 2015 Worlds when Faker was picking Rise and no one else understood what was happening. He was running up to people and killing them. We saw BDD do that yesterday, and I think that level of understanding, once everyone's in on it, they're just gonna ban it. I'm gonna jump in here because our last one's a bit of a doozy. This okay. is a question more so than a statement. It's just very much a question. What is more likely, a King Zone 3-0 or an RNG 3-0? I mean, one of these teams has actually 3-0'd so far in this okay. tournament. You got the data, right? So you're going to say RNG? <laughs> got the stat. Uh, wait, we're ho humming a bit here. Okay, if RNG are going to win, I do think they have to be in their best form, especially mm -hmm. because of the growth that King Zone have made. So I will say that it's more likely that RNG would 3 0 because they need to play out of their minds if they even stand a chance in this best of. I think based on what we've seen and King Zone's style kind of aping what Fnatic was doing, but potentially having better setups around it, I see the 3 0 more likely for the side of King Zone, but for RNG, I think they just don't necessarily have the clean play to just sweep King Zone. Yeah, I think some of the times these questions go down to which team will tilt harder or if this team wins, in which manner do they win? And I think a lot of RNG's wins are kind of come from behind victories. They have a fairly unreliable early game when compared to King Zone's best form. 
where they have a huge amount of map pressure and there's less holes to kind of chip away at. And for that reason, I think if it would to be a 3-0, it would be King Zone because of the way they play. But that said, they are the best team from playing from behind at this tournament I and know. domestically. It's a tough question. That's why we got to see the match. I don't think it's going to be a 3-0. Right. Yeah, no, we'll get won't to be the predictions just before game time. But as the competition heated up, so did the stakes for MSI. Those of you purchasing the Conqueror Varus and Ward set have brought the prize pool to $1.37 million. The skin set is still available if you want to grab your Varus skin before the tournament finishes. But get on it because you don't have much time. We are going to step away for a quick moment. When we return, we continue to preview the finals and then send it down to the stage for the opening ceremony, featuring a performance from Paris's own Danger, who collaborated with Riot on this year's MSI theme. Don't go anywhere. Let's say, Wangoga, so it made to Rona, so the Ligu Jungedo, the SK Ligu Jungedo, MSN, Mujukun Kayanda, Mujukun Kayanda, Hanguk Timmy, Hunting Bakum, and they got Chincha, Uzun, Hasin, and Jungi, and Ina, and Siguru, Hamanzo, MSI got Jungu, Mani Jungia, and go take a Choyan, the Kagin, the Shikoko, to Changane, MSI, Uzunja, Pinoshi, Sinica, so you got even on the Charaman to Uzun, I see Scott. Welcome back to the MSI 2018 finals. We're just under 10 minutes away from the opening ceremony. 
But to hear more about the class we're about to witness, let's check in with Quick Shot, Kobe, and Deficio, who will be bringing you the cast in not too long. Guys, take it away. Thank you very much, Dash. I am the aforementioned Trevor Quick Shot Henry, joined here by Sam <laughs> Kobe, Hot and Martin Deficio Lunga. Gentlemen, we've talked a lot about the series, talked a lot about expectations, but as this was the MSI about 80 carries, I want to dial in on Uzi versus Prey. I mean, the desk basically unanimously said that Uzi was the best player world. Not putting words in their mouths at all, but... I, I mean, I, I love this story, right? This tournament was thrown as the tournament where all the top 80 carries from all the regions are coming together to compete for the first time here. And it's only fitting that Uzi and Prey are the last two standing, the two very best. And they're also doing very differently, which is very fun for this specific matchup because Uzi is stomping the laning phase. He's trying to take down that first turret. He will try and shut you down early on in the game. Prey, on the other hand, he's often left on his own as we saw, where we talk about so frequently with Kingstone. And then he needs to be really good in the mid game and in team fights on Israel. Definitely cool to see them to clash. Both of them have been so successful for so long as well. They've been playing and had success in their regional tournaments. They've even gotten to finals and international tournaments, but this is going to be the final to decide who will be the first to actually take a championship. Ross Gruen had a great line for Uzi from the LPL from China, the crownless king. Yep. You know how much we love kings here in Europe and for Uzi to finally pick up his first title this spring split, but like four regional finals, two world finals, he did those back to back, no international title. Today he's got another shot, Kobe. Definitely true. Prey's gonna say the same thing though. Of course, yeah, he definitely also wants <laughs> to win this title here, but I think if you're RNG, like you look at the entire tournament, this might be your best chance. Like you've won nine games in a row now. Yes. Your AD carry is always doing extremely well and the entire team is built around him specifically. So before we go back to the analyst desk, I want to look at the jungle pools as well. We've seen both Peanut and Cuz playing. I'm expecting Peanut to play most of it. We've seen Casa and MLXG. How much does that impact the draft, because now you've also got to worry about substitutions just as much as the champions. It's really interesting because I think so much more of the substitution is about the players and their mentality rather than champion pools. Right. Uh, people always will jump to the champion pools and be like, oh, you know, he's much better on ex-champion. <laughs> but it's really been so much about, as we've seen in all the interviews, Peanut is such an outspoken guy. Yeah. You know, he's the one directing so many of the early game moves, and when he's in the game, it's about his early game plan. And the outspoken guy on the other side for RNG is MLXG, who can do random stuff. We don't know what's actually going <laughs> going to happen. His own teammate doesn't even know what's going on, where Casa <laughs> is the more controlled player, the one they are starting with as well in this game, which I think is a good thing, because with Casa, I think you actually know exactly what you're going to get, and he will play with the team. MLXG, he's just over here somewhere doing something crazy. Okay, what about the fact that Korea hasn't been beaten, what was the number? 1,106 days. Do, do you think anybody cares about, do you think that the Korean oh, overlord dominance? I dominant? think people care. <laughs> it's definitely what an mean, on intimidating the stage? number. And, but like, how much does that play into it? You know, that representing China, representing LPL, sole representation, we just heard Prey talking about that as well. I'm sure RNG wants to show that no one loses to Korea 1,107 <laughs> days in a row. They will beat them. There we go. No one loses to Korea 1,107. Nice That's what we're looking forward to. Dash, back to you guys. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Well, today's the day if they're going to do it on the international stage. There's an expectation that the biggest play comes from an insane 1v1 or a clutch tower die. But then there are the times where you and literally the entire squad show up just to say, I'm helping. In their game against Fnatic, Royal Never Give Up unleashed three teleports 21 minutes into game two to turn the table in a bot lane team fight. Let's take a look. Let me outnumber, drops the Hemo Plague, just trying to buy a little bit more time. TP is going to be coming in here, uses the flash to get himself away. TP's completed, Xiaohu and Uzi both decide to show up. It's going to be big, it's going to be a party! And RNG brings the whole crew. Quippo tries to escape, but Pars is coming in as well to make sure there's no way out, and RNG grabs himself free for free. We kind of refer to it as the clown car TP because it looked like one. You're thinking, okay, surely this TP just gets canceled, but then boom, one, two. boom, boom. It wasn't even Three. perfect time. You're like, wait a minute, it's still <laughs> going? Back in the LPL, we sat on that patch for a very long time. So we're very experienced with the uh, the Goon Squad teleports, yeah. if you will. I mean, the AD carry TP meta makes for some really fun League of Legends. We've seen bad ones. That was one of the good ones. Just got to imagine the comms from Fnatic there. Oh, we could deal with one TP. <laughs> Uh, we can maybe do it to three Triple? TPs. What? <laughs> All right. Well, that was just one of the plays that made MSI 2018 so memorable. And before we welcome the final series of the tournament, let's take a look at a couple more moments from our time here in Europe. First up, 
who could forget Double Lifts Kaisa, which rocked Flash Wolves in the group stage and kept Team Liquid's hopes alive. Yeah, this is a super exciting day. TL walked into the final day of games with only three wins. Double Lift pulls out the Kaisa. It's a Kaisa and a bunch of CC. And this fight here was insane by Double Lift. It, for a moment, looked like flashing into the victor from Worlds a couple years ago, but the output was a lot better. I did feel like this was one of the few times they had the breathing room up, some really rough early games and a rough start of the tournament to pop off. So it was definitely a privilege to watch them on the world stage. A very high moment. Then there's Caps' Yasuo, who oh, yeah. took a solo queue pick from Troll to Terrify. And this guy's name was on everyone's lips when we were talking about a possible front runner for MVP. And in his opening game, he pulls out the Yasuo and he styles up in the sidelines and the team fights. This guy went from, uh, you know, just a prodigy to King Caps in my eyes. Yeah, he definitely put himself on the map for a lot of international fans, especially with the Yasuo pick. In a terrible situation, still picks up a double kill. Such a tournament for Caps. Fnatic mid laners at MSI. It was forbidden a few years ago. Now it's Caps. They always make them up. All right, those were just two of the highlights in a tournament where we had 75 unique picks, which is the highest we've ever seen at MSI. Yeah, the previous high was 68 that we've seen at MSI. This is also the first time since 2016 an international event hasn't had a 100% pick or band champion, with Rakan actually falling through the entire time. And I really just love the diversity we've seen from the roles as well. I want to be a bit more frank and a bit more short. It's a kick-ass tournament. And that's a very simple point, but just the way we got here and the fact that no one's really agreed on a meta. It always feels like, you know, we just came off Worlds and the Arden Sensor meta. It's pretty one note. We were all seeing how everything fit within one archetype. Yeah, everyone's kind of playing their own game. And then we're seeing counterpicks upon counterpicks with the Singed a couple of days ago. The Aurelia's a new thing as well. That could just be a new 77, 78. We could keep going in this five. Wouldn't that be something, right? If the, if the final best of five was determined by another unique pit, pick rather jet within the idea of the 75 unique picks i think another thing that's jumped out to me in this tournament is the way in which uh they've come to light and the way in which the different lane matchups have fluctuated in terms exactly. of style of champion yeah. yeah even look at aurelia in the semifinals to go with yasuo that's two melee mid laners that we've seen the fact that flash wolves who was just eliminated yesterday had a main strategy of counter picking support and getting ranged support matches in the bottom lane some teams ban Kaisa. Sometimes they've never had Kaisa banned against them like RNG. Every single role, you have a thing you can look at that is completely different from team to team, which has actually almost never happened before. There's usually like, oh yeah, this is the tournament with three top laners. This is the tournament with three junglers. But it could have started that way when we thought it was going to be the Trundle, Olaf, Skarner meta, but then Graves came in, then Kindred started scaring people off, then Xin Zhao started getting banned. It's been really cool to watch. Yeah, it feels like this is just about every team's personality. I know that we kind of had this discussion around the word meta and trying to really define it. Mm -hmm. And for once, we don't really have that tournament meta. It's who plays their style better. And I cannot think of a more exciting way to go into a finals of seeing, you know, this new, unique, Korean, aggressive style versus the age-old raise the poppy, protect the ADC yeah. LPL style. And Papa, while we talk about new picks, let's not forget old ones. There are some picks that were kind of prolific in the beginning of the group stage and have kind of disappeared and I still have this lingering question in my mind will any of those return I'm thinking the Sorakas in the bot lane where did that go after kind of stomping kids for just a moment and we had Skarna kind of disappear in group stage and come back here in the playoffs I think Ash will potentially have a role here I want to see praise Ash one more time I love that everyone has their own thing they try to wield it and that's what international taunts are all should be about hey, you heard the stomping in the background of the crowd that's my crew, uh, cue rather to say with only a minute left to go let's throw it down to the stage opening ceremony. 